Do you also get confused between viruses, bacteria and fungi? Don't worry. Most medical students are confused between these three. Because infection is infection, right? How do we know if the person presenting to us has a bacterial infection or a viral infection? When do we prescribe antifungals, antibiotics? What is the major difference? Don't worry. I am here to bust the myth for you and to give you clear-cut explanation of the basic differences between the three types of microorganisms. So think of bacteria as independent factories and viruses like hijackers or hackers and fungi are the multicellular complex cousins of these three guys. So talking about the bacteria first, bacteria are independent cells. They are single cells but they have a complete genome with DNA, DNA, RNA, they have a cell membrane, cell wall, special structures such as capsules, flagella, etc. So a bacteria is capable of dividing by itself, transmitting itself, living by itself, even on inanimate objects like surfaces, etc. When they enter inside our body, they can live on their own and wherever they go and sit, they start multiplying and attacking the cells of our body, leading to inflammation, activation of our immune system. That is why you will see that in bacterial infections, there is going to be signs of inflammation, pus formation and neutrophils and WBCs are going to rise inside your body. And that is the reason that antibiotics also work only against bacteria because these antibiotics then attack the cell wall and kill the bacteria or they attack the genetic material and do not allow the bacteria to produce its own proteins, to produce its own, uh, to cause its own cell division, etc. So bacteria are like hyper-independent single-celled organisms who can survive on their own. Whereas viruses are like hijackers or hackers. They cannot live on their own. They are simply DNA information which is coated in a protein capsid. That's it. They have very simple structures. So think of a pen drive. A pen drive has all the information, but to run, it needs a computer. Similarly, the viruses need our body or cells of our body to function. So viruses are simply genetic material in a protein. When they come inside our body, they have to obligatory, meaning mandatorily, compulsorily, go and sit inside one of the cells of our own body. And then it uses the machinery of our cells to produce more and more virus babies. So it is like our cells become virus producing factories. So they have hijacked our own systems. That is why you see that antibiotics don't work on these viruses and viruses don't lead to the typical signs of inflammation or pus formation like the bacterial infections. And also that is the reason that every time the virus leaves one cell or leaves one body and goes to another, it changes very, very quickly in its protein nature. In the outer covering packaging of that pen drive, changes a little bit every time it moves from one host to another. That is why the flu, the common flu, which is influenza, which is a viral infection, you have to take vaccines every year. And the mainstay for tackling these viral infections remains vaccines, our own immunity. And against a few, there are some antiviral drugs which have been made in the viruses which don't change their shape and structure so much. Talking about the fungi, they are like the complex cousins. So they range from single cell to multicellular structures. So you have single cells such as the yeasts or candida, which are unicellular and they can enter any part of our body and cause infections just like the other unicellular organisms. But the molds, which are the long hyphae or the multicellular fungi, they love to live in damp corners. So you see them on our breads and the uh, damp ceilings and walls. Similarly, in our body, they cause infection in the superficial surfaces such as the skin folds, the axilla and other places. So you can have infections in the hair, skin and nails in the normal immunity immunocompetent people. But in immunocompromised people in whom immunity is weaker, because of any other infections, associated infections, which may be viral or bacterial, such as HIV positive people, in them, the, these fungal, fungal spores can go inside the lungs and cause pneumonias and other infections. So think of single cell like candida and think of mold such as aspergillus. So every time you get a patient who's immunocompetent and they have a skin infection, you can think of fungal infections. But in immunocompromised, all systemic infections, including pneumonias, meningitis and infections of the brain, you should think of fungal infections also.
But one thing to note here that these fungi which are so complex, they are also chronic. So whenever there is an acute infection, it may be because of some bacteria or virus. And whenever it's a chronic infection such as chronic meningitis, it is usually because of fungal infections. Now fungi do not cause acute infections usually. That is the major difference between the viruses, bacteria and fungi. And now next time when you think of a patient, you know how they are going to behave because of the basic nature of bacteria dividing by themselves and leading to inflammation inside our body. Viruses not having their own machinery and using the machinery of our own body to multiply. And fungi being more complex leading to chronic infections and majorly infections in immunocompromised people. Hope that really helped you get some clarity over the issue. Do follow me and check out more such videos if you want to learn and have crystal clear concepts about micromagic.